this is just disastrous. I know we've we've covered a lot of JD Vance interviews that don't go too well for JD Vance, but this one is to Denabash's credit how an interview should be conducted. We talk a lot about the double standards in mainstream media and how it doesn't seem with someone like JD Vance. There's gonna be the grilling that you might see in other interviews, but here it was definitely accomplished by Dana Bash in a way that it should have been. And then what was hilarious was after Vance leaves on the show just previously scheduled was Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, and then Ro Khanna, a Democratic congressman. And both of them just took time out of their responses to trash the interview that had just happened. So I'll show you all that. But here, Vance doubling down on the claims about Springfield, Ohio. That's obviously the town that has come into national focus because of Trump's debate stage remark about cats and dogs being eaten by Haitian undocumented immigrants is how they're being described by MAGA, even though these are lawful immigrants. So that's also a part of the lie, but it's all getting crazier and crazier and bomb threats are happening now at Springfield schools and Haitians are being threatened and it's spiraling out of control. And amid all this, Vance continues. Why have I talked about some of the things that I've been talking about? Let me just say this. Uh, my constituents have brought approximately a dozen separate concerns to me. Ten of them are verifiable and confirmable. And a couple of them I talk about because my constituents are telling me firsthand that they're seeing these things. So I, I have two options, Dana. I can ignore them, which is what the American media has done for years to this community, or I can actually talk about what people are telling me. And of course, many of the things that the media says are completely baseless have since been confirmed. For example, I was told, Dana, that the American me by the American media that it was baseless that migrants were capturing the geese from the local park pond and eating them. And yet there are 911 calls from well before this ever became a viral sensation of people complaining about that exact thing happening. So my attitude is listen to my constituents. Sometimes they're going to say things that people don't like, but they're saying things that people don't like because their town has been overwhelmed and it's my okay. job to try to fight for them and to protect them. Kamala Harris opened the border and now these people are suffering. That's what I'm focused on, Dana. Senator, I have to go through several things that you just said. Uh, first of all, the Clark County Sheriff and the Ohio Department of Natural Resources reviewed 11 months of 911 calls. They only identified two instances of people alleging Haitians were taking geese out of parks. They found zero evidence to substantiate those claims. Uh, also, other evidence that you have talked about, even you've retweeted alleged, alleged evidence, are unsourced social media videos from a different city, apparently no connection to Haitians. And this is from a conservative activist who offered a $5,000 reward for such things. And then going just backly to the schools and the hospitals and, the, and, and so forth being overwhelmed, Nobody is disputing that the, that the town of Springfield, Ohio, needs help. But you're not just a bystander. You're the senator from Ohio. So instead of saying things that are, are wrong and actually causing the hospitals, the schools, the government buildings to be evacuated because of bomb threats, because of the cats and dogs uh, thing, why not actually be constructive in helping to better integrate them into the community because there are a lot of employers there who say that the Haitian workers are helping fill jobs that they need desperately filled. Dana, first of all, let me just respond to, to a couple of things that you said, but I want to start with something you said, which I think is frankly disgusting and is more appropriate for a Democratic propagandist than it is for an American journalist. There is nothing that I have said that has led to threats against these hospitals. These hospitals, the bomb threats and so forth, it's disgusting. The violence is disgusting. We condemn it. We condemn all violence. Senator, this happened after you and but President say, Trump no, 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 were Dana, on, no, the, Dana, on the debate say, stage said Dana, that Dana, cats no, and dogs you were asked, being you, eaten. You asked a question, Dana, and, and I'm going to go ahead and answer it. What after we that, said, they were threatened. What we have said... And that's where the clip ends, but... That's how it's done. There are a lot of very, very fair, correct criticisms of mainstream media. There is this outrageous double standard in how Republicans versus Democrats are covered because Republicans will criticize the quote unquote liberal media for being too liberal and they bend over backwards to treat Republicans softer. So that's so often manifesting itself in coverage that we talk about, but that 
is how you do an interview, at least those minutes of it. Because clearly she came prepared knowing what the claims were likely that Vance would make. And as an example, this, this Haitian goose thing, one of the photos that had gone viral of a guy holding a goose, and this was cited as evidence, this is evidence of what Trump was claiming. First of all, not a pet, but also the photo ended up being of a guy, just a black guy. He wasn't Haitian. At least we don't know that he was. And he was in a different town. So someone just found a photo of a black guy holding a goose and said, this is a Haitian in Springfield preparing to eat that goose. And from what we can tell, the guy was just clearing it off of the road because it was roadkill. That's how these things get going. The person who made one of the original posts that made this go viral, eventually making its way up to Trump and then to tens of millions of people on the debate stage, was telling NBC News she feels horrible. This has exploded out of control and she didn't have any firsthand knowledge of it. But Vance doubles down because he's getting calls, apparently. Whether or not he is is up to your judgment. But even if he were, <laughs> just people, pro-Trump people saying, yeah, I've heard this rumor too. Not exactly convincing with zero, zero evidence. And even he's backing off of the dogs and cats thing onto probably a resident who also saw that photo on social media that isn't even from Springfield. So what Dana Bash did nicely was not just go, well, that's disputed or whatever sometimes people say when they're not prepared. She had ready to go the record of the 911 calls, the record of the baseless li baselessness of these claims going through how the lies that have been told have led to threats, to potential violence, to at least violent threats, causing school closures, threatening hospitals. And so for Vance, as Bash so perfectly put it, to go on TV and continue spreading these claims instead of just, just trying to help the residents in a town that is comprised of his constituents in the best way that he can, is disgusting. But why does he have to do it? Because he's Trump's running mate. You have to allow your soul to wither away. You can see it in his eyes sometimes. He's dying inside, having to defend these things, but he has to, to be Trump's running mate. And by the way, in Springfield, it does seem like they're having real logistical problems. So those should be problems that are addressed. It's just like when we talk about the border specifically the southern border and the problems we have there and how adults mature people can can disagree over the best way to approach those issues and then we can create bipartisan solutions like the border security bill to try to start addressing problems but we can't when the priority is only fear-mongering only political advantage dehumanization and not actually solving problems Again, because I mentioned the border, often we're talking about undocumented immigration. In this case, we are talking about individuals with legal status in the United States, but they keep misconstruing that. Then, brilliantly, Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, goes on CNN after this and says, let me, let me talk a little bit about that interview you just did. Response to what you heard from Senator J.D. Vance. Uh I mean, Dana, that was bonkers. Listen, um, the governor of Ohio, the mayor of that town in Ohio, has said this is all made up. These are all lies. There is no truth to it. And the United States senator from Ohio just came on your show and blamed his own constituents for his own lies. I mean, this guy's so pathetic, but the thing is, it is dangerous. There is a causal connection between the BS that J.D. Vance and Donald Trump spew and the safety and security of the American people. When they go out and they lie about this stuff, they put their fellow Americans at risk. J.D. Vance should be ashamed of himself. He knows better. 
I mean, this guy, whether he's on your show or, or he's in some sports bar where, I mean, by the way, a total pick me in that sports bar the other day, he just doesn't understand the power of his words, the power of his lies, and those lies are putting people at risk. This is dangerous stuff. I know it started because they wanted to just distract the American people from their failed policies and their chaos, but this has now taken on a life of its own because of what they incited, and people's lives are at risk because of J.D. Vance. This guy should know better. It's shameful what he did. This is a really apt example playing out for us of what I am so critical of when it comes to the GOP. There's there's a few big parts. The two that we'll talk about here, the one, one is obvious that I just disagree with the policies they do articulate often, most of the time. But then the the second is sometimes there will be a real problem that will be exploited for political reasons, because it's really good to scare people about, then distorted, so it starts with something accurate that gets fear-mongered about, but that's not enough, usually. So then it has to be lied about, you add onto the real stuff lies, then you fear-monger about all that, all while sometimes not doing and sometimes actively obstructing solutions to the problem. And so, in the case of the border, as I mentioned, you have nonstop fear mongering that then goes beyond fact with someone like Trump. Hannibal Lecter's running across the border. Uh, and you have him stoking so much fear, division, and then dehumanizing people all in the interest of this fear mongering. It started with a real thing, which was real logistical, humanitarian, etc. problems security problems we have relating to our border drugs coming across the border so so it starts with real he adds on a layer of lies he fear mongers about all that then he gets republicans to block solutions in congress to the very things that he's talking about some that relate to fact but the reason is because the priority is the fear mongering not actually doing anything so then in this case it started with a kernel of truth right in springfield there are actual concerns about resources, about logistics, relating to, in part, immigration. And then that gets taken, but that's not provocative enough, because that's just a thing in life that happens, and we should solve those problems, we should hear people's concerns, but it's not sexy enough for Trump and for MAGA, so it has to be escalated to the lies about the eating of animals, and about these being illegal all while distracting, as Shapiro said, from real common sense approaches to this problem or others. Because Trump gets away with having a short circuit of epic proportions when he's asked about real policies like child care. Because people go, ah, I don't care about that. And I don't care about him saying that tariffs solves every economic problem that we have. And I don't care about him saying we need to drill, baby, drill, and that's going to solve every price problem we have, even though we're drilling more than we ever have in history. I don't care about any of that because I'm so freaked out over the border, or I'm so freaked out about Springfield. And that's become a replacement for any serious policy. So it works on people. You can distract people with that fear mongering from more comprehensive approaches to problems. And that's what you have to look out for. That combination of, of real concern that people have, you escalate it with lies, and then you scare them out of people with that combination, and then you actively obstruct any solutions to the real problems over here. It's sick. Here's uh, Ro Khanna on CNN. Then on top of that, it's the... Laura Loomer of it all. She's a, um, I wouldn't even call her necessarily a conservative activist. She's a conspiracist. And among the things that she tweeted was, if Kamala Harris wins, the White House will smell like curry and White House speeches will be facilitated via a call center. L let me start with uh, that Senator Vance interview. Free advice to Senator Vance, uh, telling you to shut up yeah. is probably not going to help the gender gap he has. Uh, you know, he's got all of Trump's anger without any of Trump's 
humor or charm, just in terms of presentation. There's a reason he's negative 15 in his favorabilities. And the sad thing is, look, Springfield, Ohio has real issues. You know what that issue is? That we hollowed out their manufacturing, both parties did. We sent the jobs overseas. They don't have new industry. And let's talk about how we actually bring industry there instead of blaming people in this country. Uh, in terms of the tweet, I tweeted back and I said, I'm looking forward to having masala chai in the White House. It's actually really good. And whoever's president, I highly recommend it. If, if Laura Loomer wants to come to Fremont, we can have some masala chai. But you know, this as a son of immigrants, this country is extraordinary because immigrants tend to be patriotic. My parents told me, go make good grades, work hard. Of course, learn English, learn about the history. And that's, that's what Ronald Reagan understood and celebrated. Yeah. There's that clip. I wish I had it here. We'll probably play it on a bonus show soon. You can get the bonus show by clicking the join button below or the link in the description of this video. But uh, there's that clip of Ronald Reagan saying, in so many countries, you can, you can move there. You can immerse yourself in that culture, but you can't ever be considered of that country in your identity completely. But America is that one place where you can really, when you dedicate yourself to our constitution, our process, and this country, you can really become American. And that's the story of America. And one thing that I have really been picking up on, I know you all have as well, is, as I said earlier, it's almost like a drug for me, <laughs> this is a weird comparison to make, but with caffeine, one of the things I try to look out for is how I'll drink this 200 milligrams of caffeine in a day, and that doesn't become enough, so I want 300 and the 400, and try not to just go up and up and up, and that similar thing, you know, is uh, known to be the deal with drugs, we just want more and more, and it's a similar thing with fear-mongering, it seems. The initial version of a given scare tactic isn't ever enough after a certain period of time. So you got to escalate, escalate, escalate. And when the facts don't lend itself to that escalation, that's when you add the distortion. But what's happening here is the fear mongering about undocumented immigrants is now not enough. And so there's, there's a real push in the GOP towards fear mongering and opposing just all immigration for so long, they would say, Oh no, our dehumanization is justified because we're only doing it about undocumented immigrants, which, as I've said a bunch of times, let's solve problems, let's, let's talk about border security. None of that, though, justifies the crazy dehumanization we'll hear. But they would say, oh, but we, we care about that because isn't that unfair to lawful immigrants for us not to enforce border laws? Then they would straw man and pretend like we don't want to enforce border laws. Okay, all that's there and there's a whole different discussion there about why that was wrong but now it's even expanding where it's not even just stopping there and there's this broader fear-mongering about how immigration makes the united states worse and that's a huge contradiction with some of the values that have been embraced by america for so long reasonable democrats and reasonable republicans used to be able to agree on, on enforcing border laws, having border security, having humane border security policies, trying to streamline the asylum process, and then supporting lawful immigration because we saw and we believe in how that makes the United States what it is today, how it has made and how it continues to make the United States what it is today, as great as it is. And and now that's, deta that's detaching from the values of the Republican Party. So many of these core American principles that we've been able to agree on for so long are falling by the wayside. We've seen that with Trump's rise, and we're seeing that with this. Because it's, it's as if their fear-mongering started to fall flat. All right, we've got to expand it now. Now let's expand to all immigration pretty frightening we do have election themed merch you can get access to it uh, at lukebeasleymerch.com 